I am Bridget Burns. I uh, work at the Women's Environment and Development Organization based in New York. We are a very, um, for about 20 years now we've been around and our mission is really focused on bringing together the linkages between women's rights and, envir and the environment, the um, environment and development. And we were founded 20 years ago at the first Earth Summit in 1992, um, which is, as many people know, is happening again in June, Rio Plus 20. And I think at the moment that We Do was founded, it was really an incredible moment for the women's movement at the same time. Um, and there was a lot of mobilizing around this idea of creating a new future, creating a new world, a more sustainable world. And, you know, women really took that first Earth Summit to come together to write a women's action agenda, to really push governments, to push policy, um, to be a lot more progressive in terms of women's rights and sustainable development. And so it's incredibly important now with this conference coming up that we retain that momentum. And we do over the last 20 years has been taking and building upon what we what we've gained in um, at the Earth Summit and working on the conventions and working with the policy, working in women's spaces, women's rights spaces, and environmental spaces, and really trying to bridge between the two and and take a systematic approach to to rights, really, to human rights in and to planetary rights, really, to help the planet. So, and and why is it? Why, why is it important to have a young women, young feminist perspective at a meeting like Rio Plus 20? Yeah, I mean, well, just to say today is Earth Day. It's very exciting to be here at the AWID conference on Earth Day, to be here with so many feminists, with so many activists. And I think one of the most important things for me being here was engaging uh, alongside other young feminists. And, and there is definitely a, a big youth movement within the Rio conference itself with around the Rio movement and you know at the moment it is a very it's a very environmental movement I find um, it's a lot of young people wanting to save the planet and it's sort of you know the issue is the planet is probably well it definitely will go on with all the destruction and with the, the deterioration that we will do to it but you know what's really at um, risk is human life and human, you know, and also the inequity in the ways in which our environmental degradation is going to be affecting people around the world. It's not equal, you know, people will suffer more, people will suffer more unjustly based on north-south divides, based on, on discrimination and access. It's, it's a feminist issue. It's a, a very much a feminist issue and it should be something that young women and young activists are looking at and understanding that Rio Plus 20 is about sustainable development. It's about global governance. It's about looking at the next 20 years, the next 100 years, um, and looking especially past, you know, 2015 when we're supposed to be seeing a new development agenda. And so it's, it's not, I think, some people, you know, it's sustainable development is supposed to be these three pillars. And sometimes the, the Real Plus 20 process can be siloed into a very environmental activist um, mentality, which is, it's just really important that young women see how all of their specific issues here, sexual reproductive health and rights, um, you know, discrimination in human rights across the board, feminist economics, a green economy is, is, the, is the major, you know, something that's trying to be pushed through at Real Plus 20. So it, it needs to be something that, and it is in many ways, but we definitely need, I think, more young women taking this on as a feminist issue, becoming activists for it, and really understanding and engaging in the process because it's, it, it could be the foundation for our you know, next 20 years of development. And we, we don't want to put ourselves in a position of having to race to fix something that isn't right. You know, we have a moment now to try and, and, and influence it while it's still being kind of convened and put together. So, so what do you think uh, having, uh, having young feminists at, at, at Rio, like, what, what do you think their contribution can be? Yeah, I think that on, on different levels, you know, there is the direct policy advocacy, which has been going on for a while now, but there's still spaces for influence. There's still space for people to come in, and, and, and I think that for the women's 
major group, which is something we do as part of, and which is really leading on advocacy on women's rights within this Rio conference, you know, we need to make sure that our perspectives and the perspectives that we are bringing into this conference are holistically, um, you know, bringing together different perspectives and different women's views. There needs to be a young feminist perspective in that. We need energy, we need enthusiasm, we need people who are, you know, experiencing now that it's important to look towards the future. So I think having that perspective there and, and more importantly having that energy and that mobilizing, you know, one of the reasons Rio was so successful for the women's movement 20 years ago was the energy and friendship that came out of it. I think it's probably the most successful thing that came out of it was this really solidified women's movement around sustainable development. And I think young feminists being there could really bring that back to you know what it was and, and could really add to the debate and to the policy advocacy. Okay. And, and your organization, what, what kind of work do you do to engage uh, young women uh, in, that, in, in that process? Of Plus 20 yeah. as well. well, we've just, I mean, it's something that we are really focused on is training, capacity building, and awareness raising. And we do it very specifically for the last couple of years for policymakers to, you know, train on gender and climate change to understand the linkages between gender and environment. And I think we've gotten to a point where we want to move beyond the policy advocacy and and really harness our understanding of these linkages to young women, to um, to a more mainstream audience even, but especially to young feminists, which is one of the goals we had coming here at AWID was to engage with young women. We have done a couple of trainings last year with um, the Bali Institute, it's the, the Bella Abzo Leadership Institute, and Bella Abzo was a, a founder of We Do and an incredible leader for We Do. And so through that Leadership Institute, which trains young women, we, you know, we went and engaged in their summer kind of program to really bring um, the issues of environment and development and global governance to, you know, to make them aware of it and to engage them with it. And I think it was a good platform for us to jump off and start really engaging with young women more so I know it's something we want to do more of and we hope to do more of you know we want to we envision a network of young women leaders so friends of we do people who want to be part of this movement who want to be leaders for sustainable development because I personally think there is something very specific about being a leader for sustainable development it's systems thinking it's understanding that issues aren't in silos that it's holistically connected and you know it is about a better future and a future that we all want so yeah it's definitely a goal for us and something we hope to keep progressing on and um, just just as a final thought I guess um, um, I'm curious to know when you when you speak to young women and you, and you say sustainable development what is the reaction that you get it's it's really interesting some people get it right away some people you know, I think when I first started talking about it, I assumed that people wouldn't see it as a feminist issue. And some people get it. Some people see how it relates to women's rights and human rights. And then I think one of the things, the problems that is in, ingrained in all of the sustainable development work that people do is that some people see it as the environment, see it as an environmental issue. When you talk about sustainable development, you're talking about you know, land and water, et cetera, which you are. But you're also talking about our economic system, which is incredibly important for AWID and what we're doing here. You know, we're talking about creating economic transformation and, you know, creating a new market system that will actually work for, for women, for people, for the planet. And so I think that there's still sometimes a, a gap in, in understanding, not just with young women, but with, with, with all people of seeing sustainable development as a, a systems approach to our, our planet, you know, and to how we relate to each other as a society. Um, and so I think, again, that's why it's so important to, to talk to young women about this, to talk to all people about it, but especially because, you know, being at AWID, the, the couple of sessions I have spent sitting with young women as activists trying to, you know, there's always this, what can we do? How do we do something? That's the first question that gets asked. It's exactly the mentality that we need in these movements 
and it's the energy that we need. So, you know, again, it's just it's just a really important space for young women to be involved in. Um, I just, you know, in being in a feminist context with yeah. other feminists, um, I mean, I've heard the words like, you know, ecofeminism yeah. thrown around. What does that mean to you? Well, I mean, it, from a very academic standpoint, it, it depends on how people are, are using it. There is a classic kind of ecofeminism that is about kind of embracing women as mothers and women's connection to nature. And then and then sort of the ecofeminism of we do is really about understanding the social roles of women and understanding that there is a space throughout the world that there are undeniable statistics which show women's work in relation to natural resource management, women's work in relation to caring for communities and caring for the environment. And and so it's sort of understanding where women are placed, where where they are where their experience and perspectives are, where their knowledge is, and the fact that there is different knowledge between men and women and all between indigenous and non indigenous, etc. And and understanding that and, and, and trying to harness the leadership and, and the activism and the innovation that can be there just by the social roles that women have had. So it's an ecofeminism that is is really based in in seeing women's leadership for change on not just the environment but for sustainable development. So I think that we're definitely guided by um, by this understanding of, of women as, as agents for change for the environment and for planet, obviously. Okay. Uh, if people wanted to know more about uh, your organization and also the movement around women in Rio Plus 20, where mm -hmm. do they go with them? Well, for, for We Do, I mean, you can follow, you can go to our website, wedo.org, and we are, we try to be as social media savvy as possible. You find us on Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, crazy. Uh, we just started that the other day. Um, and then for Rio Plus 20, as part of the women's major group, um, We Do is, is part of the steering committee. We're doing a lot of work on communications for that. And we're trying to make it, you know, again, we're trying to use all the all the, the different um, mediums that we have. You can find women underscore Rio 20 at, on Twitter. And you can also go to, it's not as, as, as um, short as I'd like it, but it's women-rio20 uh, ning.com, which is a space for, it's an online platform to really provide a space for women, young women, um, and all people actually who want to talk about women's issues in relation to Real Plus 20 to come to find out about events happening at Real Plus 20, to find out about women's major group policy positions and analysis, and to share your own views and your blogs, post videos, post photos. So um, there's definitely a lot of ways to get engaged, whether you just want to be part of the conversation or whether you really want to engage in the policy. Um, you know, you can definitely just find, if you look women at Rio 20, you'll find a, a number of different ways that you can get involved. Great. Thanks so much. Thank you. It's been great.